All right, so that was all about initial compromise, right? So they send you files and you get compromised and you know, you, you should be aware of what you are, uh, what you're clicking. The next one is establishing a foothold, which means um, different hacking techniques to allow the attackers to, uh, to persist in, uh, in, a, in the compromise environment, compromise system for actually a longer period of time, like really long, you know, it could be like, you know, months, it could be weeks, it could be years also. So as soon as, you know, the intruder gets into the system, uh, they need to prepare the steps in order to return to the, uh, uh, to their command and control or things of that sort, right? So in order to be able to connect at any time, uh, they want to make sure that, you know, the compromise system has, uh, the compromise system has always a return strategy, they can always get back into it. So for that, uh, what they do is, they, uh, they have different uh, techniques for it, different tricks. Um, and uh, they have already, you know, lured a victim by, you know, say, uh, they have double click on, you know, file or something like that, multiple emails. And, uh, and they could be silently sitting in a system for three months at a time and waiting for the right time to go out there and, uh, you know, and finally get uh, access to it and, and, you know, understand and, and put their, and uh, establish their foothold. And um, I've, uh, there, are other, there are examples where, you know, uh, back doors have been open uh, and the reason uh, of establishing a uh, foothold um, uh, could, could be like, you know, going into the strategies and some of the uh, multi-strategy approaches which uh, these guys, uh, these uh, 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 hackers, they form and uh, they're mostly into uh, like, you know, breaking into a system and then wanting to uh, go a little bit deeper, slowly, undetected and then, you know, uh, also use, you know, simple malware, probably just a downloader for that matter. And then, you know, uh, once, they, once they've established their foothold from the internet, then they'd load another piece of sophisticated malware, right? So, so it is a strategy in which they, they basically uh, go slowly and, uh, and, uh, and uh, kind of, you know, start with a smaller piece of, you know, downloader, a very simple malware, and then uh, adware, or which looks like an adware, it could be anything, right? So, you, so the, your antiviruses and all, they don't, you know, raise alarms, your firewall, your protection, you know, walls don't really raise alarms, right? And that's why it is not, uh, it is not, you know, intrusive in nature. And uh, it can, you know, bypass most of your, uh, most of your security checks and measures. And now they can also install backdoors uh, that kind of uh, relate other components to run. Or, you know, they can, you know, start firing other components. And once they have a backdoor, then, you know, the, the entry becomes much easier for them. They can go in and out, you know, not physically, but uh, remotely. And so, uh, and also get information. So this basically let, uh, tells you that, you know, the attackers, they, uh, when, once they do or once they download a backdoor, uh, which by itself, it can, uh, it can you know, be, be you know, con it's like a controlling thing for your network, for your com compromised computer or computers. Uh, so there is also like, you know, uh, parameters which it, which it kind of runs under. It requires, you know, uh, 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 a parent process to execute, right? And then, then they basically try to run it uh, and they won't see anything because it depends on um, other components. So, so the strategy here is that the attackers are able to bypass uh, the detection part of it, okay? So, okay, establishing foothold was, you know, a, a key strategy which, you know, you understand. Now, in, when, you're, when they're establishing a foothold, right, they want to also have a web-based command and control. So command and control, the C2, is what, uh, what is also part of uh, establishing foothold. Because that access now, what is going to control those servers and somebody sitting for somewhere, right? Normally, they use a compromised website. So as soon as you uh, break into a system, they connect to the compromised website, which receives the information. And this is very, very interesting because you can imagine um, uh, at a certain point, the program, right? I mean, it's basically going back. And it is uh, certainly, let's say, like it's uh, connecting to a Microsoft forum. And uh, this is like they're talking about some SharePoint stuff there or, some, or anything, it could be anything, Office product or something. It, it doesn't raise any red flags with any of the rules which you have done because it's just a forum. There's a connection being made to a forum. And there is something being downloaded from that forum, right? And Microsoft products are legit uh, you know, sites. So you don't, uh, you don't see any malicious uh, behavior there. But in reality, they have taken over that website, 
that website is their command and control now because they are passing their uh, malware, their sophisticated malware uh, through the forums and you know the, they're like a Q&A forum so you read the response normally they prepare like fake questions also uh, in the forum and uh, they have hidden responses and they just be and you know the commands to execute and to affect you know pretty pretty clever strategies are used actually down there so the normal uh, commands uh, that they receive from you know say uh, say there was uh, that kind of a connection which they have done with the forum or with, with you know a compromised website they can you know either you know put put certain actions to sleep and uh, and uh, sometimes they be quiet or they go to sleep for a day sometimes month and they don't do anything and but they're still inside the system because they don't want to raise any suspicious alarms right and uh, when they start downloading or executing or updating malware they, they just want to be quiet and there are different ways what they do is they download something they will download um, and avoid try to use you know fake websites try to use you know um, uh, like HTTP headers normally which are you know more uh, uh, I would say like you know uh, different fake file types or something like that when you connect so with so all these things when they're doing are getting done through the internet to the wire through your network and then they'll re return a specific content right and uh, say uh, they're gonna they're gonna you know uh, receive back you know something which is a PNG file it's a it's not a PNG file you can always you know Reading a file and change the extension, and they've changed it to a PNG, and that's a, you know uh, a bigger image image uh, image file format. And uh, so now this type of file is not considered as malicious by a lot of you know or most of the antiviruses, right? And your browser is going to process it and accept that image file and download it locally, and um, and it could be even a zip file, and it's going to have you know it's some HTTP header that the file uh, equals to zip, and the same way different file types are coming through the attack is going on and let's say um, um, they're going to send a zip file and the zip file is coming from a server and it's actually a exe so you know that they're different it causes confusion it causes chaos into your uh, creates havoc with your uh, security products and your security products will not do anything as soon as they see a zip file they'll say oh well this is all good it is uh, it is let's uh, bypass you know or it's, it's all good so let it go through and now uh, basically they have uh, some compressed you know uh, files they execute them and uh, they have got some kind of sophisticated malware and uh, you know your network uh, security measures have not detected it so pretty interesting right but now you know the main steps for attacking is to try to allow the malware uh, and uh, getting in there without de without detecting because once they get their malware, no detection has happened, they have succeeded. And that is the APT threats. They are very advanced, you know. So you should know that APTs, they are like very sophisticated malware. And uh, to get them inside the system is also the very different kind of techniques are followed down there, right? Another one is uh, SSL uh, communication. And this is very common. The attacker is going to connect to the internet. They're going to use, you know, encrypted, uh, secured, uh, socket layer SSL that's what it stands for encrypted uh, um, connection and then the security product in the network can see that hey this is a very secure encrypted connection so you know it's, it looks pretty good you know keep on doing what you're doing that's what the security product is going to say because he thinks or the product you know um, uh, internal you know systems checks and measures don't uh, flag it for it another strategy is to uh, to just go to the internet and download everything but in chunks of bytes you know so what happens is when um, so all all our systems you know out there they they make sure that you know if any large files um, uh, like you know un uh, what do you call it um, some patterns which are which don't match you know unknown patterns kind of start uh, showing in the network uh, security uh, systems that they detect it oh user one has been downloading these files all day for you know uh, I, I want to check you know if this is a regular pattern no this is not why is he downloading and these are big files but if the files are very small in this case you know if they, they set the file size to say like 200 bytes and they then they have like many of these 200 byte chunks this they're basically splitting their malware into these small small chunks and this the security products will not detect it they're like oh yeah this is just like maybe like 
going visiting websites, downloading, you know, because when you visit a website, there's a cache which happens, right? It could be anything. It's not malicious. This downloading is okay, right? That's what it'll come out as, right?